We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why are those ants swimming in? Are there ants in the water? They're loving it. Oh, Look at well. them. They're cooling down. They're it's probably down. really hot. It's cooling down. <laughs> Okay. Dear beloved, Jesus our Lord, after he had risen from the dead, told his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written the promises for you and your children. I lost my place. <laughs> the promises for you and your children and promises, baptism now saves you. We also learn from God's word, we're all conceived and born sinful and in need of forgiveness. We'd be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of all the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I'm going to come over and, and, and make a little sign on you. It's the sign of the cross, okay? Yay. Ready? You're Stand ready? Stand here. It's okay, it's okay. Hey, okay. okay. Michael Crichton, it's just a little sign. <gasps> and what that says is, it says, Jesus came for you, and he lived for you, and when he died on the cross, he did that for you. Good job. To mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Hear how our Lord Jesus Christ has opened the kingdom of God to little children. The people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the despitefuls rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will receive the kingdom of God like a little child who will not will never enter. Brandon and Lisa and George and Jeff. And Jeff. In Christian love, you present Kate of holy baptism. You should therefore remember him in your prayers, remind him of his baptism, see that he is faithfully brought to the services of God's house and taught the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in union with the church, he may lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? Yes. Yes. We do. We do. God enable you both to will and do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Because Kate cannot answer theological questions for himself we shall all faithfully speak on his behalf and testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus reject sin and confess the faith in God which Jesus makes known the faith in God the Holy Trinity do you renounce all the forces of evil the devil and all his empty promises do you believe in God the Father do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. I do. Okay, Kate, are you ready to come over here with me? You just come over by the water. Mom and Dad, come and come. Brothers, we all come. Kate, Mom, Michael, Brandon, Lisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Does that feel good? Of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Here, I just want to do something. That's okay. He loves water. We're you good. like water? He just came out of it. He's probably going to go okay. back in after. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with His grace, the life everlasting. Peace be with you, guy. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we give you thanks that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Kate the new birth of holy baptism to make him a member of the church, the body of Christ on earth, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly ask you that he has now become your child in this way, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, 
that according to all your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Does that feel good on your fingers? Oh, yeah. I bet it does. Yeah, everybody probably wants me to throw water on them. <laughs> Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon Lisa and Brandon, the dear mother and father of Kate and Harley. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you've given him. him. Enable them, along with all parents, the teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, now this is your part. You all ready for it? See it's in there? Okay, I'm going to cue you. Now, they're all going to speak a word of welcome to you. Ready? Ready, Cade? Through baptism, God has added Cade to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior who's called us out of darkness in his marvelous life. We, we welcome, welcome you into the, the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. God bless you. Can't okay. <laughs> Shall we Yay! applaud? I think we should applaud. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. Hope you enjoyed the service.
cries out too deep as deep cries out too deep Come. hi kids since pastor isn't here i get a chance to talk to you one of my very favorite stories from uh, Sunday school was about the Lord Jesus, where Jesus talks about being the good shepherd who takes the lambs in his hands and he takes care of them. I wish that I was able to bring you a real live lamb, but, well, I had a friend who loaned me a couple things. A little one it sort of reminds us of what a lamb would be like but pastor would be pleased to see that I found a puppet a puppet lamb now got a question for you do you know what your birthday is what day it is well sure you do we all know that One of the favorite stories that uh, I learned in Sunday school was, I am Jesus' little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. Well, he knows me, even calls me by my name. Yes, the Lord Jesus knows our name. But you know, he especially noted our name when we were baptized. Now, you know when you were born to, for mom and dad, but do you know when you were baptized? I know mine was on November 26th when I was just a couple weeks old. And maybe that's something that you can research with your mom and dad and find out when it was that you were baptized because that was the day, not your birthday, but when God adopted you as his very own child. And he said, you're my little lamb. Remember that, eh? The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all my day, the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jeremiah 23 verses 1 to 4. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Mark 6, verses 30 to 34. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran out on foot ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Good morning, and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Theo, and it's my privilege to be able to speak to you this morning. Now, just a few moments ago, we heard that most beloved of all Psalms, the Lord's my shepherd. Now, David wrote a great number of Psalms that we find in, in the scriptures, but he wasn't always a writer of the Psalms. Once he was just a humble shepherd boy. And as a shepherd boy, his task was to take care of his dad's sheep. Now, when the Lord sent Abraham and Sarah to the promised land, it was a pretty barren place with no cities where people could live until later. But Abraham and Sarah and and their tribe had their living taking care of sheep. And now Jesse, he had many sons, but the youngest of them was young David. Now David perhaps spent many, many long years up in the hills, hills that are perhaps a little bit like those that we have here in the Okanagan, barren and not much vegetation, but quiet, wonderful places, but at times they could be scary places. Now it was David's task to take care of the sheep. And amongst other things we heard, David wrote, the Lord's my shepherd. He, lean, he takes me to places where there's green grass and where there is quiet waters. No, it probably took some doing to find some green grass for the sheep that he had. And interestingly enough, sheep do not like a babbling brook or a gushing fountain. They want a quiet piece of water where they can have a drink. Now David learned all of this and later he put some of this in poetry, poetry that we treasure. But now David was learning some other things in the peace and solitude of those hills. One of those things, I believe, he spoke a lot to the Lord in prayer. And he marveled at nature. And that later inspired him to write so many of his beautiful psalms. Now maybe in the quiet of solitude and being alone, David learned to play the harp or the lyre. For later we hear that he was able to soothe King Saul simply by playing the harp. Something else that David learned while he was up in the hills 
was that it could be a dangerous place and there were dangers for his sheep. Amongst other things, there were mountain lions, very much like our present day cougars. And you can imagine, how do you protect against a cougar? A shepherd's staff? Yes, possibly. But more likely, David learned how to use a slingshot. And you can imagine that he got very good at that. And now you know the rest of the story, because being good with the slingshot, later he could challenge Goliath. And he brought down Goliath with just a few smooth slingshot stones. And the Philistines were defeated. And David now became the favorite of King Saul. Amongst other things, David learned not only just how to play beautiful, wonderful music, how to relate to his God, I'm sure, in prayer, but also it was the making of a future King David, who is perhaps the most famous of all of the kings that we know in Scripture. If we were to read just a little earlier than the Gospel, that you heard a moment ago, we would hear about King Herod, who was truly a, an awful fellow. King Herod, amongst other things, married his brother's wife, Herodias, and Herodias, she had a real hate on for John the Baptist, who called her on it. As we know from the Dance of Salome, uh, she was given a gift by King Herod that she could demand anything that she wanted in the kingdom. And Herodias said, I want John the Baptist's head. John the Baptist. This is a sad time in the life of Jesus. We hear in the sixth chapter that his disciples came and told him what had happened. And the apostles returned to Jesus and they told him what they had done and taught and heard. And he said to them, come away with me by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. But Jesus didn't get any rest. People figured out where he was going and they followed him, vast crowds. And then we heard in the gospel and now many of them saw where he was going, and he knew them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. And he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. Truly, they are at the whims of the rest of life. Hunger disease, pain, and above all, no leadership. They were like sheep without a shepherd. But it was Jesus who said, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. And I, and I lay down my life for them. And so well we know in the rest of the gospels, Jesus did precisely that. He laid down his life so that his sheep could have eternal life and be forgiven their sins. But you know, my friends, sheep are not the brightest of critters, and we are not the brightest of God's creation. The writer of, the, of Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray. And, they, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so Jesus willingly went to the cross of Calvary and laid down his life for the sheep so that he could give to you and to me the promise of eternal life. Jesus once said, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. But I have other sheep that are not of this fold. And so 
that's the joyous news that you and I have had the privilege of coming to know the Good Shepherd and that we are part of his flock. Now, amongst sheep, there can often be wandering. And I know in my life and in your life, I'm certain, there have been times that we have not been proud of where we have been. We're a little bit like sheep that have gone astray. And our wonderful white wool is no longer but one of my most treasured pictures is this one. The Lord Jesus picks up the black sheep and he carries it on his shoulders. He forgives us and he gives us the guarantee of eternal life that if we trust him as Lord and Savior, we will one day be with that eternal flock on that great getting up morning. Till then, my friends, trust in the Savior, who is our Good Shepherd. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his Darkest night.
I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hello, my name is Uta Van Ziffel. Will you please join me in prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you invite us to pray and that through your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we can enter with confidence into your throne room. We can call you Abba, Father, and know that you hear and receive and answer our prayers. Thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, who intercedes for us even when all we can come up with is groanings. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the leadership and the fellowship of our St. John's community. We pray for wisdom as we move forward from the restrictions of the pandemic and as we plan for the new church building. Give us open hearts and eyes to see how we can be your light shining in this town. We pray for the members of our community who are sick, whether they're in the hospital or recovering at home. We pray that you would be their healer, their strength, their peace. Also give peace and strength to those who care for them. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for the vaccine rollout in our country, and we continue to pray for wise leadership and for wise personal actions in regards to this COVID virus. May we not forget the lessons that we have learned over this pandemic and are continuing to learn. We are so blessed in our country, but it is not so all around the world. We do pray for equity and justice. May there be wisdom and willingness and compassion amongst the global community to help one another. Oh Lord, how we all so need you. We know this peace can only truly come at your hand. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We're so thankful for this country that we live in, for Canada. We know that so many people have come from around the world, from every tongue and tribe and people and nation to find healing and comfort and a safe place in this country. We thank you for all the many blessings and the freedoms that we can enjoy here. And yet we know what a great injustice we as settlers have done to the First Nations people. And we grieve along with the First Nations mourning the injustices done to their families and children. We pray for your comfort for all who mourn. We grieve the injustices that have been done in your name. You have been so misrepresented and people have been turned away from trusting in your holy love. Oh Lord, I pray that hearts would be open to your true love and that we healing would come to our land and that we would be true bearers of your light by showing your compassion and your goodness in our hearts and our actions. Right. Heavenly Father, as I pray, there are fires burning all around and smoke socks in the valley. Thank you for the brave firefighters who labored day and night against the flames to keep us safe. We pray for their protection and for their strength. Be with those who've had to leave their homes and those who've lost their homes. We pray for those with respiratory ailments that who are particularly susceptible to difficulties in regards to these smoky conditions. Oh Lord, we are so dependent on you for our very breath. Help us now, we pray. We pray for rain to clear the air and to put out fires and to refresh our land. Even though there's no rain in the forecast, only one small cloud icon on the forecast, we pray in faith, even as Elijah prayed for rain seven times. And when there was one small cloud the size of a man's hand, he prepared for the deluge. So, Lord, we pray, please send your rain. 
Of necessity, I prepare these prayers several days before Sunday. And I invite you right now to take a moment to pray quietly or out loud for what is current and dear to your hearts. In a moment, I'll close with leading us in the prayer Jesus taught us. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, keep you until the day he returns in glory. Keep you in the true faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in his power alone. Amen.